RGB is confusing, really confusing. And because all these companies want to make more and more money, they want you to buy their parts with their proprietary components and force you to use their special software. If you try to mix different brands of products, you run into compatibility issues and most likely a day-long headache. The same exact headache we get when we see that only 6% of our viewers are subscribed. There's three different types of RGB, standard RGB, ARGB, and static RGB. Standard RGB traditionally has four pins and requires 12 volts. The RGB strip or fan can only be one color at a time, which is changed by some sort of controller. Whereas ARGB traditionally only has three pins and requires only five volts. Each individual LED light can be controlled by software, leading to cool rainbow effects like this. The more outdated version of RGB is static RGB, which simply means it's stuck to specifically one color and powered through something like a Molex or a SATA power connector. ARGB or adjustable RGB is the new standard, which is unfortunately found in a lot of proprietary connectors like these. The next big question is, where do I plug these specific connectors into? If your motherboard is going to be the only thing controlling your RGB, it's pretty simple. Something like a 3-pin or a 4-pin plugs into these headers on the motherboard and can be divided amongst many devices using an RGB splitter. Everything plugged into these headers can be controlled by the motherboard software. If you have more RGB than your motherboard can handle, you can use something like an RGB hub or a controller. Some hubs are standalone units, so the computer has no control over the system's lights. These would be controlled by buttons hidden inside your case or a wireless RGB remote. The other, more advanced hubs would be one of two things. They're either a large, more powerful splitter that connects to the RGB header on the motherboard, or it's plugged in and treated more like a USB device. Well, not that type of USB. On all modern motherboards, you find USB ports. Although they don't look like a standard USB, they do have the same functionality, meaning it's a USB port with pins instead of a traditional plug. These pins are found in the bottom of the motherboard and plugged directly into these RGB hubs. The motherboard will have the male connection and the hub will have the female connection. This will allow the computer to control the RGB effects as if it was something like an RGB keyboard. Not all of these USB control hubs are the same though. The main reason is because some of these companies are greedy. For example, Cooler Master uses a standard ARGB connector on their hubs, meaning you can plug any RGB product with this connector into it. But this RGB hub from Corsair only works with their fans because of their specific connector. Although there are adapters, the software won't take full advantage of all of its effects. These specific proprietary connectors can make you feel like you're locked into one company's products, which is their goal, but there are some good ways around it. We'll get into that later. So what about the components without cables or connectors? We all know you can find RGB on every PC component. Products like RAM, GPUs, and motherboards don't have RGB cables, so they're simply controlled through either the motherboard software or that manufacturer's software. More specifically, RAM is almost always ARGB, while GPUs and motherboards can be either or. So what do you do if you have Corsair fans, but an Asus graphics card, and an NZXT AIO? Well, this is the fun part. Software. This is that headache we were talking about. These companies love to force you into their own little ecosystem of products, but there are a few workarounds. One company software will always favor their own products, and to get around this, you need to look for software that makes all these companies' products get along. RGB Sync is a complicated way of making all these companies share the same brain, but there are a few downsides. For example, even if all your devices are controlled through IQ, you won't get the same level of customization on a non-Corsair product. Also, the lack of collaboration between these companies can lead to some of your RGB simply just not working. If you think that you could just run multiple RGB softwares at the same time, you couldn't be more wrong. RGB software is always clashing with one another to take control of their devices, so it will never fully function properly. There's a bunch of open source software that try to make this integration easier. Softwares like OpenRGB will work as a pack leader and take all the products under one software. But even these types of softwares aren't perfect. Sadly, with the current state of RGB, you only have two options. Either spend more money and stick with one company and one software, or go through the painful abyss that is RGB Sync.